So I think it's fair to say I'm a bit of a fan of a raised bed. And I mean, you can see traditionally, when I first started out here, we just had all sort of dug beds like this. But now I've got raised beds all over the place, primarily pallet colours, but we've got metal ones. We've got ones made out of old fence panels. We've got all sorts of stuff to make raised beds. And I love a day. There's nothing quite like a day when we're creating new raised beds. I say new ones, old new ones, because I've got some new palette colours. Well, they're new to me. They're not new, they're used, but they're new to me to make raised beds out of. And one of them's a little bit different. I've never seen one like this before. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a bit when I bring them out and we get started with this. But let's, let's talk about this bit here. So a few videos back, I was talking about getting things ready for spring and summer, and I want to grow more things vertically. So as I've developed the allotment, the plot over the years, we're just starting to run out of beds and space and things that I want to grow. So typical sort of urban architecture, as you call it, when you can't build out anymore, you build up. So we're going to build a vertical squash arch in here. So I reckon this, this is the old potato bed and we're going to put it here. So we're going to have two pallet colour raised beds, one over this side, one over this side in three archways, three of these archways, but this, this one's fallen apart. This one's rusted through, fallen apart. I'll come to them in a different video, how we're going to do the arches. I reckon there's enough space here to get the two pallet collars in there, get a nice little gap down the middle and an archway or three. I'm going to have three of these archways going over the top and I think it looks spot on. In theory anyway, we'll see if it works out in practice. But I guess less waffling for me. Let's get this sorted. Let's get cracking. Let's get some new beds in place. So just while I'm in the process of taking this, cover off this has been on here over over the winter so hopefully there's not many weeds there a couple of things to talk about in where I've decided to put this this sort of raised bed or these new raised beds and the the arches that are going to go with it I was a little bit worried about shadows and obviously squash squash has got a lot of big leaves on it and where I'm going to grow it and I decided here and, I, and I'd done a little bit a little bit of research on it actually this was suitable or not and if, if any of you'd watched the, the Potty Mouth, if any of you'd seen the, the Potty Mouth flower special, and I talked about this a little bit on there in terms of casting shadows and things. So obviously I'm going to have the two palette colour raised beds in here. The squash is going to grow up in the middle over there. And what that does is the, the squash plants are going to be right near the front edge of the beds where they're going to grow up the arches. And that leaves a big a big space behind it that because of the because of the arches and because of the squash and the way it's going to grow it's going to be in shade for a lot of the day i mean i know we're, we're pretty open here the sun gets around but you know if you think the arches are here palette color beds here sun's up there a lot of the time that's just going to have shade all over it but not to worry we're going to put our shade loving crops in the back of the bed so things like lettuce and spinach that sort of thing i've decided i'm going to put them in the back of the beds and hopefully just naturally that sort of, you know, ad hoc kind of companion planting that's going to solve that problem for us. So we're not going to have wasted space in behind those two beds. And we're going to have the arches that we want to go vertically for the squash. So I'm hoping that's actually going to be quite a good solution. Now you can see there we've stripped off the plastic. I say that's been on all the way over the winter. There's a couple of, I can see there's a couple of little weeds and stuff growing through. There's nothing, nothing major, but I'm going to replace that with cardboard <laughs> those of you who have who've seen inside the polytunnel recently or over winter it does look like I'm, I'm cultivating cardboard in there but it it does get turned into a a sort of de facto storage area for things over the winter and one of the things i store in there is lots and lots of cardboard for this exact reason so when it comes to to springtime and inevitably I'm doing things with raised beds or paths or whatever and I need to put something down that's gonna gonna suppress the weeds a little bit underneath the beds. Cardboard is just the job. A double layer so I haven't quite brought enough cardboard along with me. I'll have to go back to the polytunnel and get some more. I want it doubled up to begin with. It will rot down pretty quick by the time we've got the beds in here. By the time we've got the the material on top that's gonna rot down pretty quick. So I've been busy doing, doing a few bits and pieces. Two things to mention. One is I have lined the inside of the pallet collars with old compost bags. So I've cut them in half, cut them in half again, and it's the perfect size just to put all the way along the inside here. And that's just going to protect the wood, protect the wood from any dampness, any wetness that comes in from the, from the compost and that. It's going to go in here, pallet collar, raised beds with. And as you can see, this bed has something in it, and it's wood chips. So I've been, 
over to the pile of wood chips over there we get free wood chips and i've got another barrel full here these are already so over in the wood chip pile there's always two different types there's some that's been there for ages that's starting to rot down already like these which is perfect for this job and then there's the brand new light coloured stuff that you can probably see on the path that's perfect for doing the paths now it's a bit it's a bit heavy because it's a bit it's a bit wet but i'm just gonna put the whole wheelbarrow full in there and that pallet collar just, <laughs> just moved a little bit when i when i did that so let me just straighten that up and i've been i've been walking all the way down here and looking from here just to check that they're kind of in line now, now around here i don't make sure everything's perfect i think the day i start making sure everything is perfectly level and perfectly straight around here it's the day i've retired and i've got plenty of time on my hands to be doing that sort of thing but just for now with a school-age family and a full-time job good enough is good is good enough for me and i'm putting this in and they say this bottom layer in here is going to be wood chips now one thing i need to remember is that this will eventually rot down the level inside the beds will shrink down over the window as the wood chip rots and it goes down but we've got other stuff to put in and fill it up and i've got two different things here and i've not spent loads of money to fill these up so the two bags topsoil there they were reduced down to one pound each at b&m and they were down to one pound each because there's a little tear in the bags and it's probably lost about a teaspoonful of topsoil out of it so that's magic for a pound i've got some compost there that was a two bags for 10 quid so far reach I got that from the garden centre over there, Rook and Glen Garden Centre, where my allotments are. As an allotment holder, I am very lucky to get discounts. We get discount on anything we buy from the garden centre. So in terms of filling the beds, we're doing them pretty, pretty cheaply. Now, I did have some scissors wherever, wherever I put them. When I mentioned compost bags, and although this one's got a, a tear in the corner, I'm always careful as to how I open the bags because... Like I say, I use them for all sorts of stuff, whether it's carrying other stuff around, whether it's lining these raised beds, whatever it is, I'm usually pretty, pretty careful with it because once we've tipped the stuff out and just make sure that's totally empty there. The contents is topsoil. It's a little bit wet. This has been sitting at the bottom of my garden for a while. So it's been out in the rain, it's been out in the wet. You know yourself, you know, when you go to the garden center and the compost outside, like out the back, and it's been raining, you pick a bag up and it weighs a ton compared to the stuff that's inside that weighs next to nothing. But you can see that's just been cut there and that's going to be smashing for using for something else, whatever it is. And we'll just pop it under the wheelbarrow wheel there so it doesn't blow away because it is, it is getting a little bit windy. So that's just one bag of topsoil. I'm going to put one bag of topsoil in here, one bag of topsoil in here. So we'll get this one. Let's just move this over here again it weighs, a, it weighs an absolute ton because it's wet it's been outside but we'll carefully open this again and we'll just dump it in i mean i could have bought a builder's bag i could have bought a big builder's bag full of full of stuff but to be honest this has just been a little bit of a last minute sort of job for me although i've had it planned that i'm gonna put this in here and and do this in this space i didn't have it planned to come and do this today but i'm doing it today so you know i'm just gonna finish filling these up i'll put one and a half ish bags of compost in see how it looks and here we go two pretty nice brand new or brand new to me raised beds right here in the middle of the allotment and they're looking smashing and they were I know when this video goes out, I don't know what's going to be, 8, 10, 12 minutes, something like that. It's maybe it's been about an hour's work for me in real time doing this. The pallet collars, they've all been stained with sort of decking, fence protection stuff. Cardboard down, pallet collars down. We put the layer of wood chips in. Topsoil that we got for a pound a bag, just because I had a little bit of a split in from B&M. Then we've got the compost that we've topped it up there. Remember, that was two bags for 10 quid from Rook and Glen Garden Centre and Linlithgow, just over there. And it's maybe it's cost me, I reckon, £15 overall to fill these two beds with all that sort of stuff. Like I say, I'm, I'm lucky because we get the wood chips for free and stuff like that. I accept that. But the other material, about £15 because I've only used two and a half bags of that compost. Now, when it rains and stuff like that, 
this will sink a little bit it's not far off the top at the moment like you say there's maybe what two inches off the top of the pallet collar there which is about where i wanted to be i think at the moment come autumn time or next spring time i will have to mulch them i'll have to raise the level but that's no different to any other bed that you see around here they all get the same treatment and that's what will happen but i'm chuffed a bit to them and just imagine the project's coming in the future, you know, we'll have the arches here. Imagine me here in the middle, we've got beautiful arches, squashes at the height of summer. It'll look marvellous, but I am going to put covers on these beds for now, because like I say, it's going to be squash that's going in here, so it'll be a little bit of time. We're just the middle of February now, so it's going to be a couple of months before there's anything out in these beds. So we'll get them covered up, any weed seeds, anything like that, around and about that blows over. Because it's brand new, it's clean, it's sanitised compost, Let's try and keep the weeds out of it for as long as we can. Anyway, that's me done for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.